My name is Pearl. This is the story of my mother, Hester Prynne. It was the year of our Lord, 1666, when she arrived in the Massachusetts Bay Colony, filled with hope that here, at last, in this new world, would come the freedom to worship without fear or persecution. I struggle to imagine what her life was before she came to the new world. Why did her husband send her on ahead, alone? Was it a test of her loyalty? Or her spirit? Or was it an aspect of his nature to set traps for people in the hope that they would fall into them? Throughout the long summer, Mistress Prynne and Reverend Dinsdale avoided each other at all costs. Mistress Prynne rarely ventured into town, and the Reverend escaped into the wilds with only the Indians and the faithful Johnny Sassaman for company. And so the colony held its annual election day as usual. No one the wiser that there existed among them two hearts struggling against a love that grew stronger with each passing day. Had it been up to him, my father would have ended it and revealed the truth of my origins. But bound by my mother's wish, he could not. He went every day to see her, every day he was refused. His eye ever on that window for her sign that it was time for him to come forward with the truth. <sighs> Had there been flashes of Prince's unstable nature before, in England? No one knows. But now, freed from Puritan society, he was with increasing regularity seized by spirits so powerful they were terrifying even to the Indians. Although he wore no outward symbol of his shame, my father bore his own scarlet letter on the very bosom of his soul. The pain of their separation must have affected us all, for I was indeed a troublesome child. His heart aching for my mother, my father sought to fill his loneliness in the wilds with Johnny, as they struggled to keep alive their dream of building a bridge between the English and the Indians. Prynne's punishments were succeeding in their cruel work. The seasons ran their course. The distance between them was impassable. My mother took the terrible risk of writing to my father, reminding him to hold steadfast in their love and keep his silence, aware that Prin's subtle but constant presence was causing an inner torment that threatened my father's very soul. As for Prin, his lust for revenge began to feed on itself, so that he hungered for more to have betrayed the only person on earth who had shown her kindness. What could feel worse than that? Matuba. Poor mute Matuba. When Prince summoned her, she wanted only to undo the harm she might have caused her mistress. The town was in an uproar. And so my father risked one last meeting with my mother, convinced that if they were going to hang Harriet, it would not be long before my mother and I would be seized and hung in our turn. In the faraway Carolinas, my parents were at last to find a measure of the happiness that had been denied them for so long. My father died before I reached my teens. Some say that was a punishment. My mother never remarried or, nor loved another. Some say that was a punishment. As for me, I did not see it that way. My parents shared a love like no other. I know the spirit of that love lives within me and will live within my children forever. Who is to say what is a sin in God's eyes? <laughs>